my last semester at Columbia and I just came back from spring break and I'm really just trying to get my mind sorted and everything finished and everything lined up for my final exams and also the exciting thing is the start of my proper dissertation research so at the end of the semester a proposal is due for our dissertation I actually just turned in my literature review for my dissertation which is basically a long paper where you give the historiographical overview of what other scholars have already written about the topic that you're interested in and you really position yourself in terms of the originality of your research and how what you will be contributing will be different than what other people have done in the past and if you're new here hi welcome my name is christina i'm currently a master's student in international history based out of columbia university and the london school of economics so right now I'm finishing up my year at Columbia and then I will be do some, doing some exciting research over the summer that I'll be excited to share with you, which will include some traveling and going to archives. So those should be fun. And after that, I will be actually based out of London for the second half of my master's. And I'm really excited to share that journey as well. But for now, this week, it needs to include a lot of getting my brain sorted I need to like ensure that I'm on top of everything that's due for my classes while also like putting in the small steps with my dissertation as I put it together slowly because I really don't want to leave it all off for the last minute because I kind of did that last semester. It burnt me out. I don't want to do that again. So let's go to campus together. I have class and then just get our weeks brains. <laughs> organized as a student this is a question I've gotten before and different people have different ways to take notes and like ensure that they're meet all of their deadlines on time and in in the past few months I've actually been lucky enough to use the platform called Scrintle you can sign up for it too if you use my code Christina 10 it's been extremely helpful because it's allowed me to like write out my notes for class and also like organize a bit my, my own research questions a bit better, especially since I'm in the starting stages of my research. For example, this week I used it because I had to do a presentation for one of our readings. And it was so helpful because I was actually able to like visualize all of the main themes and questions that I wanted to bring up in my class presentation. And the convenient thing is you can create this little like web between your thoughts and ideas. So like I drew out all of the main themes that I wanted to bring up in my conversation and then questions under each theme that I wanted to bring up when talking to my peers. Also, I really love it because you can actually put large chunks of text in and if you need to find it very quickly. And I've been using this as a weekly planner. I'm the type of person that has a constantly scattered brain. I have 10,000 tasks in my head. And so actually having a full system online it has been really helpful with Scrintle. I have used like Google Calendar before, but I don't find that it actually allows me to like keep track of all of my tasks. And in Scrintle, I've been able to color code them. So like in blue, I have all of my schoolwork. In green, I kind of have like my more mundane everyday tasks, emails that are fast and boring. And it's just helpful to have everything in one place 
both for my research notes and my keeping track of my work. And I have really actually liked having a visual platform to keep track of all of my thoughts. If you didn't want to go to Mexico, why ain't you say so? I could use the time alone Put on the Spanish cable Outside it's pouring, pouring down Time ain't never moved so slow You're breaking my heart, love I'm coming apart, love I think it's the start of a symphony You and me Two lonely people It's been a bit of a week, but I finally feel like this week is actually my little like pause week. I just had midterms and I turned a few of those in. So it feels like a fake little moment of less stress than before because the finals are like far away enough where it doesn't feel like the deadline is right here but i am thinking about it because it's like six weeks in six weeks so i can't fully ignore it and it's actually nice because both thursday and friday i don't have classes so i'm actually going to we're going to head to the library to do more readings later today and i'm actually currently reading a book that i really have been loving and i'm currently reading it for my writing lives class and i want to share it with you it's called A Midwife's Tale, The Life of Martha Ballard, based on her diary, 1785-1812, written by Laurel Thatcher Ulrich. So the interesting thing is, if you've ever heard of the phrase, well-behaved women never seldom make history, I think that's the phrase. Whatever that like iteration of the phrase is, that has been like put on like magnets and mugs and in protests and everything like that. It was a historian who wrote that. Laurel Thatcher Ulrich actually was the one that wrote that, I think in one of her books, and, which I thought was amazing. So she's a women's historian. And in this book, she found these diaries of a woman who was a midwife in the late 18th, 18th century and lived in Maine in America. Actually diaries at the time were not extremely popular as a medium to write in. And most of the, and specifically for a woman, it's very, very rare to come across a diary written by a woman from that time. And it's interesting because in that class we've been discussing why people started writing diaries and at first it was initially used specifically as a way to track of your labor and your work. So some people had diaries around like work and what they produced. Other people also had diaries as spiritual practices. There were of course a few exceptions of people who started diary writing diaries way before, but as a whole they really were not that popular. And it's interesting to investigate the people that have, especially from a women's perspective. And I've really been loving this because what Ulrich does is she starts off each chapter with a few diary segments from Martha. And then she like writes a whole social history of how the women lived, reconceptualizing how we thought of both of like women's labor and their role within like American society at that time and how they conceive themselves both as like economic bodies, but also the housework and the social web that existed. I might not be making that much sense, but it's just a really interesting way to write social history. And she's an amazing writer. I think it's an extremely accessible historical account. And I mean, there's a reason why she won the Pulitzer Prize for this book because it's stunning. And actually when I go to the library right now, this is one of the books I'm presenting on this book and I have thus far read this much and I have like this much left so it'll be the book that I have to read I just noticed I bought this as a used copy and I guess a little child decided to go for it on the back page but I recommend this to anyone really even if you're not like a history major or anything like that I think it's really interesting and I'm not actually that interested in like late 18th century U.S. history that's not really my thing but I'm finding this really interesting. It's kind of reminding me of Natalie Zeman's Davis, The Return of Martin Gayer, which I read a few weeks ago and I completely loved as well. Similar vibe, similar vibe. And just to update you on how like this dissertation and research going, 
it's going. I, <laughs> that's mainly what I have to say. We have a proposal due and actually tomorrow we have our fellowship applications due for getting funding for both research and also language study. And I might actually have an exciting chapter coming up, which I might be actually in Paris if all goes well with my fellowship application and everything like that and I get the money that I need to study French and then also to do research later on as well because I need to do a lot of archival research, so getting funds for that. So it's really exciting because there's a lot of exciting plans that soon will be happening, hopefully, but I don't wanna speak of them too soon before they fully are officialized on all accounts. And so right now it just feels like there's a mixture of excitement for the things that are to come for my research and for my work. And in a way also because it's spring, it's starting to be nicer weather. I feel like my motivation to work is starting to just go down, but I really need to keep it up and like finish out the semester strong and feel very satisfied with the end of my Columbia term. So on that note, we're gonna go to the library. I'm going to read this and some other books that I need to for research and we're gonna get some things done. We just talk, but we ain't got shit to say. I just love it when your body comes my way. school I don't know the weekend is a time where you're like I'm, I need to be doing work but then sometimes you end up doing nothing and it just feels very counterproductive of resting and working and right now my apartment is just a huge mess after this past week so I think my goal is just going to be clear it all up I might do some like light reading I feel like I always perform better when on the weekends I just take them off and don't even try to do any work or at least have one full day of not doing anything. We'll see if I end up doing that. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> if I do any work, it won't be too much. And I also on the weekends try to do like my light fun reading that's outside of school. Although with the end of the semester, that's kind of winding down. And because I feel like the end is in sight of the semester ending, I'm really trying to concentrate on all of my class and research readings. And I know that in the summer, I'll be able to get to all of my fun readings. But I hope you enjoy tagging along with me. 
in this week-ish of my life at Columbia, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye!